Estonia has built the world's most comprehensive e-government, a digital administration with a free nationwide broadband network. While many nations still struggle to provide internet access, Estonia has become one of the world's most attractive environments for tech firms and startups. Estonia's president, Thomas Hendrik Ilves, visited the Wilson Center to share lessons learned about cybersecurity, privacy, and the digital economy. That's the focus of this edition of Rewind. Estonia has set up something really remarkable. When the Soviet Union fell, Estonia built a brand new government, and they built much of it in cyberspace. They've expanded it, upgraded it, and defended it, even in the face of serious Russian cyber intrusions. In 2007, Russian hackers threw everything they had at Estonia, taking down websites and cell networks, banks and broadcasters. Eight years after the world woke up to the prospect of cyber war, we're proud to have President Ilves here for a conversation on free, secure, and prosperous networks. The challenge faced by liberal democracies is far greater than I think we have, we have understood. Uh, Snowden um, has managed to make everyone paranoid, but Snowden's just a small part, I mean the Snowden revelations, not Snowden himself, I mean this is a small part of the kinds of things that we have to, have to face, and then we also have to think what does this mean for how we do liberal democracy. I find in Europe uh, right now we all too often are are encumbered by a paranoia about the United States and Snowden that means that, um, I mean, it will, to the advantage of the United States, will lead to major, major restrictions on all kinds of things in the internet that, um, in companies and market access that will all work to the disadvantage of Europe and to your advantage ultimately. From my experiences in dealing with legislators, uh, and with some government figures in, is that they have no clue about the digital side or the mathematical side, which comes from, again, the lack of attention to the STEM, STEM subjects in, um, in all, of liberal de all liberal democracies. Let me just uh, boast about my own country a little bit, because I think we've gotten some solutions to it over, over time. Not that we were actually, uh, that we were, in, were intentionally brilliant, that was a lot of it was serendipity. But certain things we discovered, because Estonia is, uh, we were number one in internet freedom in the world, now we're number two, because Iceland sort of made, tweaked this legislation a little bit. But that Freedom House uh, says that. I guess we're number 11 in freedom of speech in the world. The U.S. is like 34 or something, but, but we're a very liberal democratic country. And one of the additional benefits is we're also by far the least corrupt country in, uh, of the post-communist world and less corrupt than half of the European Union. Our IT is, uh, I mean, we've de uh, done things quite differently because we've managed to, I would argue, have better security than almost anyone else and at the same time maintain this, uh, I mean, this, this genuine internet freedom. It's a topic which has not been in any of this discussion, especially the things that have been hijacked by sort of Snowden, is privacy. Uh, it's not privacy. I don't, I mean, ultimately, if someone reads my blood type, I'm not so worried. I mean, I may, may not be happy. The issue, real issue, is integrity of data. I mean, fine if you know my blood type. If you change my blood type, right. that's where you're really in trouble. And how did Stuxnet work? It didn't go in there and do nasty things. It changed the inputs to the computers controlling the centrifuges. I just wanted to ask you, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, NATO Cybersecurity Center and uh, Estonia's role Good. in that and the relationship? Its first publication two years ago was actually a legal analysis of the, of how uh, the existing laws on conflict uh, apply to the cyber domain. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's an intellectual operation, looking what does this mean? Uh, and you have you know, international lawyers working there, then you have people who, who know something about uh, you know, the digital world, but it is, um, as opposed to the propaganda that we get from that same Eastern neighbor, I mean, they're not sitting there figuring out how to, um, attack anyone. In NATO you have interoperability of weaponry, that means you can take a French missile and put it under a U.S. wing and vice versa. Um, <coughs> uh, in, cy in the cyber world we're still kind of in the intelligence realm where you share nothing uh, and so there's uh, 
I mean, that's one of, I think that's something we have to get over, frankly. For more information on the Wilson Center's Global Europe program, visit wilsoncenter.org and search under the Programs tab.